Hey everyone, got a big head, struggling to get your 3D printed masks to fit. Well, you're not alone. So today I'm gonna to show you how to scale your prints perfectly. So that way you can finally get the fit that you need. So if you're here, you probably know that 3D printed masks can be a bit tricky to size, especially if you're not exactly working with an average head circumference. So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to properly scale your mask model on your slicer software so that it fits just right. And don't forget to stick around because I have a special model that will make this whole process super easy. So now before we dive into the slicer software, I just wanna do a special shout out to Saturday Morning Props and Quest for Nostalgia. A lot of these tips that I'm gonna use in this video, I got from watching theirs. Definitely check out their pages, give them a like and a follow. Also huge shout out to the creator Budwin on the Maker World website for the 3D model heads that he created since we'll be using those in this video. All of those websites and pages you'll find in the description below. So before we jump into the Slicer program, we're going to talk about how to actually size your head. So that's one of the most important things that you need to do to get the proper head circumference. So all you're gonna do is just take this measuring tool and just measure the circumference right above your ears, right in the middle of your forehead. As you can see from mine, we have about 24 inches. So once you've got your measurement, here's the simple formula that you're going to use. Just divide your actual head circumference by the model that we'll be using. Then want to times that by 100 to get the actual percentage. So this will hopefully give you the perfect size based on your measurement, your circumference. So now that we have our circumference measurements, we're going to go to the Maker World website. This user does also have a page on the Thingiverse site, but this is the easiest one that I define. Just do a search for Budwin. So once we're on his site, we're gonna just click on the 3D models and scroll down until you find the head models towards the bottom of the page. And just to go over the description summary, so he does have four heads available. Starting with the first one has the 21.7 circumference all the way up to 23.2 with head three. Head four does go down again to the 22.9. So we're just gonna use the 23.2 since that's the closest one to 24 inches. So I'm going to download the files. So once you have the 3D head model inside your slicer program, whatever, whichever one you're using, go ahead and just go up to the scale option at the top. Once you have the scale option available, you'll see that it's at the 100%. So again, so based on your measurements, you're just gonna give this a change. Mine was the 103.4. And that's gonna change all across just to increase it up to that scale size. So according to the math and everything, this should be the size head that I will need to scale the 3D masks properly. But what I'm first going to do, just to test this theory out, is I'm going to print this head and measure it myself. I'm just going to cut it right at the top and not, I'm not gonna print the whole thing, just the top part that we need, just to confirm the measurement is correct. All right, so moment of truth, just to kind of test it to see if I got those measurements correct and if we can definitely use this to scale. So once again, middle of the forehead. And I can get it on correctly. All right, come on, work with me here, work with me. Maybe it would have been a good idea to print the whole head, but bleh, whatever. Looks like I'm about right. It's a little over 24, so I might just use 103% instead of the 103.4 just for scale size. I think that should be fine. So definitely play around with it on your own. You print off your own head if you want to. I would probably just take, take the percentage that you get and just narrow it down to whatever it's closest to. So like in my case, 103.4 use the 103. If you have 105%, um, 105.7, maybe you use do 106 just to be safe. So the helmet I'm going to test this on is going to be the Captain America helmet. 
created by Star Player on the Maker World website. So I'm going to go ahead and download this. Once you have your head skilled properly and you have the helmet that you want to use, you're just going to take the head and just slide it over. And let's see if this fits right off the bat. No scaling of the helmet yet. Moving this down. Actually, I think we could just center it. There we go. And then center the head. Perfect. All right. Let's move this primer out of the way. So as we can see, the head comes out from the top and from the back and definitely all right, so we want to make sure we align it up for the eyes, the nose, everything else correctly. So a couple of tricks when it comes to checking and seeing if it actually fits properly besides anything popping out from the back or the top is if we go to the plate and uncheck the helmet, you can get a in-depth view of what the head looks like inside. Everything that looks pretty good. Not liking the ears, but there's really not much I can do about that. I feel like the top is a little too big, so I'm going to scale that down. I'll probably scale the back just a tiny bit. So that way that it's not going to have any issues with my ears. And again, there's nothing wrong with having some extra room. That's what helmet padding's for. But we definitely want to make it as close as possible. All right. Looks like 105 is the best number that I can think of or the best number that I can see. So we're going to go ahead and print the helmet and let's see how it fits. So, helmet is done. Moment of truth. And it fits. Yay. Uh, as you can see, there is some room in the front a little bit and in the back. But, I mean, helmet padding is probably where that would come into a play. I feel like you would probably want that anyway, just to make it more comfortable, depending on what, you're, what you plan to use the helmet for. But it looks like worked like a charm. So there you have it. No more fiddling with random settings or wasting filament on prints that don't fit. With this easy technique, hopefully you can scale your 3D masks to print perfectly every single time. And I'm Eric Sauer with Sweet and Sour 3D. Catch you in the next one.